Welcome to Virtual Worship with Northley United. Our mission at Northley is to love God, nurture the Spirit, connect with others, and serve the world. Thank you for joining us in worship. To learn more about us, visit our website at northleyunited.ca. As we begin our service together, we acknowledge that we are gathering on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto was covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. We are very pleased to welcome Reverend Dr. Olivia Smith, as our guest minister today. Olivia works at the General Council Office of the United Church of Canada, supporting worship and faith formation ministries. Olivia may be familiar to you as the editor of this year's Lenten study, Act Fast, Spiritual Practices for a Climate in Crisis. You can read more about Olivia in her bio in the bulletin. Welcome, Olivia. Uh, before we begin, we have just a few announcements. Um, a small group of us gathered last night for Earth Hour here in the, uh, the Narthex, ran some candles and sang some songs and had some s'mores, and we actually have some hot chocolate leftovers, so you can enjoy that uh, at coffee time as well today. Thank you to Josh for leading us uh, through some fun songs and some surprisingly challenging Earth Day, Earth Hour trivia, which was Good. And I learned that you want Jim Hartley on your trivia team if you're going to be playing. So, um, okay. Uh, Stephen, I think you had an announcement. I just want to thank everyone. And I see some bright, shining faces here today who came out yesterday for the Big Cook of Palooza. It clearly, you know, you've recovered from it all. And, you know, if I can make a shout out to anyone, it's to Roger and Joyce for helping us figure out the stoves or the ovens, rather. We put the meatloaves in one oven, and one hour later they came out, shall I say as delicately as I can, burnt to a delicious crisp. The oven beside it, we put them in, and an hour and a half later they came out cooked. So clearly we have one oven that when you want 350, put it at 12 degrees, and the other one you wanted at 350, put it at 1,000. But we will figure out the correct numbers one of these days, but that's Cookapalooza part one. Part two, don't forget about the Sunday. Come to Youth Without Shelter, see the kids, work in the kitchen. It's a wonderful experience to see these kids' faces when you give them, you know, a piece of meatloaf. Trust me, the desserts they really like, It'll be chocolate cake and ice cream, but feel free to, you know, come and help out there as well. You don't even have to cook for people that don't like to cook in our frame. There you can just serve. So remember, there are the two parts. There's cooking, and then there's the going out there and serving. But thanks to everyone, and Roger, Joyce, all of you that came out yesterday and helped out. I appreciate it, and I know the kids will appreciate it today, so thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Um, okay, uh, today is the last day to hand in your Easter flower tribute donations and memorial names uh, to the office. You can use one of the special flower donation envelopes available in the narthex or simply uh, contact the office with your name, names and uh, donation. The funds will be used to buy flowers to decorate the sanctuary on Easter Sunday. Uh, today is also the last day to hand in your loonies for Lent box, and I did see some boxes in the collection plate back there, so thank you for everybody who donated to, uh, to that as well. Our Good Friday service is on March 29th and will be held at Leeside Presbyterian Church starting at 10.30 a.m. The combined choirs from Northley and Leeside will collaborate for this service. If you wish to watch live, it is also available on Zoom, uh, contact the office to get the link. And if you are unable to join the service uh, in person, a recording of it will be available after the fact and uploaded to our YouTube channel to be viewed later in the afternoon. So uh, that's always an option as well. 
And then join us here on Easter Sunday at 10.30 a.m. as uh, Leanne is back and uh, she'll be joined with a choir and a brass quartet. Are there any other announcements that I might have missed? In that case then, thank you.
Jesus entered into Jerusalem humbly on a donkey, seeking to transform the people. People gathered from everywhere to wave palm branches and praise him as royalty. Jesus enters into our lives humbly, as he did then, seeking to transform our hearts and lives. Let us worship together and receive Christ into our presence. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. And now, in the way you are most comfortable and able, please greet one another with the peace of Christ. Join me now for our opening prayer, which is printed in your bulletin. Holy One, today we celebrate your triumphant entry into Jerusalem so long ago. We also know that this day begins the final phase of your journey to the cross, a journey filled with pain and sorrow. We gather here to walk with you, knowing your fate and the suffering you will endure. We commit to the hope that you know your suffering will bring, and trust in the power of your love to lead us. May we find the courage and strength we most need as we face the darkest side of humanity. May we find the grace to forgive as you forgave, and by that grace, may our true humanity be restored. Amen. Our next hymn is Open Our Hearts, which is also printed in the world. Chief 
This is God's doing, marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. in the name of God. We bless you from the house of God. God, our God, has given us light. With the palm branches in hand, let us march to the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. They talk of two parades likely happening at the same time today. From the West, I don't know, West, West thank you. <laughs> From the West, likely a grand procession with war horses and chariots, foot soldiers, fancy leather boots, golden eagles, polished brass and silver, and guards everywhere you turned all centered around the spokesperson for the Lord God and the rightful ruler of Jerusalem, the governor, Pilate. This would be in contrast to the parade that we read about today coming from the east. This parade is a modest, grassroots affair, truly, with sandals and bare feet, borrowed donkeys, palm branches, a road paved with coats, and people everywhere singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us, to a very different ruler of the people. It's really easy to forget that this parade was likely in direct opposition to the, uh, to the other Lord and the other parade coming from the West. That this parade coming from the East that we commemorate today in our palm procession was probably better understood as a protest. With that in mind, let us hear what, once again what the Spirit has to say to us this morning as we hear this story again from the Gospel of Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it, and I will send it back immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the passerbys and bystanders said to them, what are you doing? Why are you untying this colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and Jesus sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, blessed is the coming of our ancestor David, Hosanna in the highest, highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. In this reading, we hear God's voice. Please join me again in prayer. O 
loving God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our Lord, our rock, and our mighty, mighty Redeemer. We know that when words fail us, even the stones will cry out, even the branches will sing of your glory. May it be so. Amen. So, why wave palm branches when you could be riding in chariots? Why come from the east when you can come from the west? Why join this bootleg parade that is really a protest when we could be watching the live stream or catching the recap later? Why stand when you can sit? My grandma would always, always say. Why, friends? Why are we doing this? Why are we choosing to be here right now? Why are we following Jesus in this way, whatever this may be for you? Is there an out, and should we be taking it? I have asked myself this question a lot in my life, a lot. And I can remember asking myself these questions right before my last playing exam at music school. It was very scary. I remember asking myself this question the first time I marched in Washington after Trump's election. I wore this stole today. It's not usually the stole I wear for Palm Sunday, but it is my protest stole. So it has the marches and things I've been in on it. And I remember asking myself these questions before that first march on Washington. I remember asking myself these questions the day of my ordination, my ordination interview. Why? Why am I doing this? Why am I here doing this when I could not be here and not doing this? Would not doing this make me less faithful? Would it make me any less a follower of Jesus? I can also recall many heartfelt conversations with friends discerning these questions around the choices we make when we have decided to follow Jesus, and if they still stick five, ten, two years later. Should the path really be this rocky? When is it a leap of faith, and when is it just like reckless and foolish. What is that risk? And is it really worth the risk? What is the motivation? And is it helpful? Is it advancing Christ's cause? Or is this just another really fancy case of the helping hand strikes again? Why stand when you can sit? My grandma always asks. All of these questions remind me so much of my grandma, whom, ironically, I would gladly follow anywhere and would gladly stand or sit wherever she stood or sat. I remember once with tears, I followed my grandma to St. Elizabeth, Jamaica, to bury my grandfather. I presided over the funeral with the local minister of the small tin roof church beside the one-room schoolhouse. In that church, there is a beautiful porcelain toilet that no one has ever used. I asked the minister about it, and he explained that some person, very much like you, he said, <laughs> came from afar to visit family and saw that there was no toilets in the church. So with great effort, and I mean a lot of effort and a lot of money, paid for an expensive toilet to be shipped to the church. They did not understand that there is no indoor plumbing. In the church, there is no warning water. There is no need for a toilet in that church. Now, this porcelain throne that will only ever be filled figuratively occupies the room that was once the minister's study. <laughs> and he looks at it and shakes his head, but he kept it as a reminder. 
It acts as a constant reminder of what can become of good intentions. I think of this often, especially when I feel myself getting, you know, a little sanctimonious about a path of justice and peace that I am currently on for the sake of Jesus Christ and for the sake of Christ's mission in the world. I think of this often too when I am overly worried and the question is just like, don't stop in my head. Why? Why? Why am I doing this? What is this work? What is the purpose of this? Am I actually helping the cause? Am I actually following Jesus' path? Or am I involved in some self-congratulatory, feel-good endeavor that serves me more than it will ever serve others, more than it will ever advance God's kingdom? I am painfully, painfully aware that it is not always as obvious as we might think to avoid these thrones of good intentions. Which is why I think that minister lost his office for this throne. Seats, especially lavish ones, often look very, very inviting. I am also sure that we could all dig deep and share a time when we have invested in or sat on a porcelain throne of good intentions. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to share with a neighbor or anything like that. But I'm sure we can all think of one, eh? Yeah? These are those times when we or our ancestors ardently, ardently fought that we were following the way of justice, the way of love, the way of Jesus, only to learn that we were misguided. And in fact, feeding the very thing that we claim to fight against. There are so many examples of that. That could be a whole other sermon. Colonialism, I think, is always a fine example. Choosing how to follow Jesus and how to be faithful can be very, very hard work, especially when the decision is public and could have large repercussions. When the, when the decision involves joining a parade, that is actually an act of protest. We should ask a lot of questions. We should have a lot of fears. We should fret a little. But sometimes a line of questions can be misguiding in and of themselves. I admit that I have been guilty of using texts like today to reinforce the belief, which I believe is misguided, truthfully, to reinforce the myth, perhaps, that following Jesus should be very, 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 very hard, that we should fret a lot when we're following Jesus, that if we are not suffering, if we are not agonizing, if we are not taking risks and standing when we, should be, when we could be sitting and making all sorts of huge sacrifices, if it doesn't hurt, we're not doing it right. The heavier the cross, the greater the faith is what I had once learned. Don't get me wrong, following Christ should take a lot of discernment. It is important to wrestle with the why of it all, as mysterious as it may be. But I, I have come to realize that following Jesus, although it does tend to mess up your life, is actually the easy part. Following someone whom I love and whom I know loves me and wants the best for me is actually quite easy. It's not a hard decision to make. It's kind of like following my grandma. Sure, it wasn't always rosy. She like dragged me to honest eds at like the crack of dawn to get the turkeys. But I loved her and I loved it because I loved her. I would follow her anywhere. I imagine the same could be said for those disciples who loved Jesus, for us disciples who loved Jesus, and whom we know Jesus loved. We know Jesus loved them so much. It's not that easy, it's not that hard to follow someone that you love. 
And I pray that the same can be said for each of us. Even though the tasks might be hard, the decisions to follow in Jesus into Jerusalem was probably not even a decision at all, I think, for, Sam, for Simon, Peter, and Andrew, and James, and John. How could we not fight for that which we love and are connected to? How could they not follow him into Jerusalem? How could we not praise the one who has saved us with their love so many times? How could we not follow? The hardship that we face as Christians isn't because of Jesus. It's not Jesus that's messing us up. It is because of injustice. It's because of oppression. It's because of greed. It's because of all that separates us from the love of Christ and the love of God shown to us through Christ. And enduring that hardship is not meant to be a badge of honor, a mark of fortitude or of faithfulness. It's not scut work we need to get through. It's the cost of deep love for Christ and for Christ's people. We grieve deeply when we have loved deeply. Yes, the way of Christianity is hard because it is so contrary. It is so opposite to the other parades going on around us. But what I have learned is that the love the love of Christ and the love of God, the love we share for each other, smooths our path. That love smooths this rough path and propels us even, propels us into the mystery of this week, this week of death, of agony, of resurrection and redemption. This week that is more powerful than we can imagine. It's all about us, and it's not about us at all at the same time. This is the path that compels us to stand until all can sit comfortably. So why stand when you can sit, Grandma? Why stand when you can sit? I think that this was my grandma's way of saying, stop fretting. It was her way to remind me that sometimes the decisions of what to do is made easy for us by love or by necessity or even by common sense. Sometimes the decision is made for us if we sit and listen to our hearts. Why are we here? Why are we doing this? We choose to wave palm branches today instead of riding in chariots because Christ, our friend, our savior, our brother, needs us. Our love needs us. And as Dorothy Sole pointed out, this is Christ's irresistible appeal, that Christ needs us to bring about Christ's kingdom that Christ won't do it without us. That is his irresistible appeal. May we, friends, continue to faithfully go where love calls us, today, this week, and forevermore. May we continue to smooth the path for our friends and our colleagues so that we can all sit comfortably one day in Christ's love. May it be so. Amen.
Beloved, please join me in prayer. And as we pray, we remember that the Spirit always intercedes on our behalf when we don't know what to pray, and when we don't know what to say, and when words fail us. The Spirit always intercedes with sighs too deep for words. So with that assurance, let us come before God now. God of life, as we enter this holiest of weeks, we are thankful to be on this road with you and with fellow sojourners throughout time and space to have smoothed this path for us with their faithfulness and with their love. We are grateful. We are grateful that this distance that we travel together is measured not in meters but in transformation. And we seek that transformation for ourselves, for our community, and for our world. God of life draw particularly close to those of us who are weary, those of us who are tired, those of us who are born, and those of us in need of your healing embrace that we name to you now, out loud or in the silence of our hearts. We know that our shared journey towards love and justice is hard, and that there is much work to be done. Forgive us when we create roadblocks for others and for ourselves. Forgive us for when we overcomplicate the task of following you. Lead us when we stray from your path. Sustain us when we are faced with trials and guide us always towards your heart and your love. As we journey through this week, strengthen us to face the very worst in our world. Hatred, greed, power, war, fear, violence, oppression. Strengthen us. And may we refuse to avert our eyes from the unimaginable suffering around us. May we refuse to avert our eyes. And may we bring your compassion, your mercy, your hope, your wisdom, and your love to every situation, to every encounter, to every place we go and person we meet. And may the greatest of these things that we bring be love. Help us to remember this week and at all times that your love has the power to destroy all that has brought you to this week and all that has brought us to your side. And may we cling to you as we cling to each other in kinship, praying together the prayer that you taught us. Our Creator who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Jerusalem, my destiny on page five.
beloved, friends, siblings in Christ. This week, today, we have set our hearts on Jesus. We have set our hearts on a love that will never let us go. Be confident in that love. Be courageous in that love. Find strength in that love. And in whatever you do, and whatever you say, and whatever you act, share that love. Because you might be the only gospel that your neighbor, that the stranger meets this week. You might be the only act of love and kindness that they experience in a world that is filled with much suffering and much pain. So whatever you do, whatever you say, write the gospel and make it exceedingly plain. Make it very, very simple so that she who runs may read it. And may the grace of God and the love of Jesus, our Christ and our Savior, and the abiding friendship of the Holy Spirit who will not leave us, not even when the world becomes quiet. May they all be with us now and forevermore. Amen.